Aktong, the Vox of YouTube. It's me again, your pal Anani. It's been a long while, mostly because my old computer exploded. We're back again with a new episode of everyone's favorite show, Let's Explain Victoria 2. Now, I know what you're saying. Kaiser Anani, you awesome, studly, uh, other good general things to say person. You said in your video title that this was going to explain the United Kingdom, but I see you're playing as Prussia. What's up with that? Don't you know your countries? To answer that question, yes. But to further answer that question, let's take a look at the UK here. The UK is, at the time of Victoria 2's start date, both of them actually, if you have AHD, number one in the world. It has the number one prestige, the number one industry, but only the fourth place military. Now, the biggest thing that uh, one could fear during the entire game of Victoria 2 is having the UK declare a war on you. What I would do in most other country scenarios is play as the UK and tell you exactly who to declare war on. But, there's a little bit of a thing about uh, the United Kingdom. It's big. It's really big. If I sat here and uh, talked to you about all the different places that you could take over from the United Kingdom, we'd be here roughly three-fourths of a year. So, with that being said, instead I'll tell you something that personally I see as a little bit more important. How to deal with the United Kingdom. Now as for dealing with the United Kingdom itself, uh, first let me give it a disclaimer before I say anything else. This is... My methods of explanation aren't perfect. In many si situations, the UK will have generally an upper ante over you, and in some situations, I'm not even going to lie to you, it's, there are times where it's literally impossible to defend, or attack and win, and in such cases, I would uh, recommend just putting up as much of a solid defense as you can, uh, try and, but if they start to lose, if you start to lose provinces, make sure to, uh, Give them what they want before they try to take something more. So I'm going to describe this, uh, I'm going to give this video from three different perspectives and what to do with them. First is the, uh, of course, the greater European powers here on the continent where we're starting. Secondly, I'm going to tell you how to defend from the Americas. And tertiarily, I'll tell you how to defend from both Asia and Africa as generally an uncivilized strategy. So let's start with the European Wars. The United Kingdom often tries to stay out of wars on its continent unless its interests are directly threatened. Um, at the beginning of the game, if you play as the Netherlands, in fact, you might find a nice surprise when you try to go in for all the Belgian provinces that you have a core on. Uh, in other cases, it could be having Denmark seared when you need to go after it for Schweizerich Holstein. It could be just a generic squabble over some colony somewhere else. Generally, Europe is probably the uh, least often placed where you're... No, it's the second least often place, The middle of the three, I guess. Where you'll find yourself at the war with the United Kingdom. Also, however, it is the Middle Easiest. That was well said. But, almost every United... Almost every United Kingdom, almost every country in Europe, especially the great powers, uh, less so for the secondary powers, has some uh, great advantage that the United Kingdom does not. Uh, Prussia, of course, starts out with more army technologies and a more disciplined army, which is more centralized to its own commands as well as, it, as its gang of uh, minor powers. Austria, Hungary, starts with an even bigger gang of minor powers, uh, from South Germany to Italy, and other places, and tends to make allies easily, as well as the fact that uh, its many provinces tend to have a lot of high population areas. France, speaking of high population, has the potentially most numerical army in Europe at the start of the game. Well, not nearly trained to the point of the Prussians, its high population allows for a gigantic mobility pool to rise, and even with that, it still has uh, 
navy that's actually comparable to Britain, which means that they'll have a much harder time actually landing troops in your area. Um, Spain has Gibraltar right next door to it, which has a very large war score for what it is, and actually capturing Gibraltar in the course of the war can cut off Britain from the Mediterranean entirely, inviting further conflict from other powers who try to want to get a piece of the pie to Sicilies and other colonial powers in the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire probably is the worst great power to be at war with with Britain at all, but you do have one big advantage, and that's that though there's a naval base close by in Malta, the Brits generally aren't going to go after you, and if they are, you are too far tucked away. It's a very long trip. You will definitely see it coming. Um... Because the AI generally will not do the good old classic strategy of move the ships right up the shore before you declare war or get involved. But at the same time, due to its proximity to a lot of Middle Eastern countries that the, U that the UK tries to get involved in affairs with, the Ottoman Empire is also the likeliest candidate to be at war. As far as being wo at war with the UK from the Ottoman Empire... I would really kind of suggest being a lot more on the defensive. Don't try to go after any colonies they have, because in the Middle East, they're likely to have a bunch of armies there. And your outdated armies, mostly made up of regulars, aren't really going to stand much of a chance. The Russian Empire probably stands second only to Prussia and France at the start of the game, who can really uh, protect itself from invasion from the UK, mostly because it's big. It's hard to get to, and it's big. The areas that the UK can actually land in, uh, in the southern part of Finland, the Baltic states, and Siberia up here, are either way too costly to reliably go after, which is Finland, uh, Karelia, and the northern part of Siberia you occupy, or will likely be where you're hosting most of your armies, in the capital and the Baltic states. Those are the straight shot at the capital from the Gulf of Finland? You really should have some armament there anyway, and even if they do capture it, they still got a lot of ways to go before they actually get to your ter get to your uh, very costly territories in Poland and Moscow's area. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit on what you can do to uh, avoid being curb stomped by the UK. First off, play the war defensively, whether you actually are on the defensive or not. This is probably most important with France, the Low Countries, and Prussia, as they're not only the most likely to be attacked, but also the uh, easiest to attack from where the UK stands. Um, I would support, obviously, first of all, having at least one dedicated military to being uh, part of your coastline in various areas. I would suggest Dunkirk and Normandy for France. Uh, just anywhere in the Netherlands for the Netherlands. I mean, it's pretty much all coast. Uh, Bruges for Belgium, though you really shouldn't ever be at war. Uh, Hanover for the Germans. And with that being said, it's also a good note, speaking of Hanover, to go after this little spot of, island, of an island too. Because though it won't really get you enough uh, war score to knock out the UK... It could, in some circumstances, prove that, hey, you're really wanting to actually go to war here, so it'll try to wipe peace out with you, except, of course, in case of a great war, and in that case, pretty much little you can do, aside from defend and uh, try to knock out whoever the war leader is, because by that time, Britain shouldn't be the largest military. As far as general, def general defense tactics, um, Europe, unlike its contemporaries, Lacks it's the main advantage that you can have while taking out the UK, which is poor provinces of supply. Uh, you can get, alleviate this for in some cases, like the Netherlands has Leuven, which has, I believe, one of the worst supply limits in all of North Europe, and you can use your armies to uh, coerce Britain to try and occupy that area and take casualties. But aside from a few specific examples, there's no way to attrition out Britain from the war. First off, as for practical benefits, make sure, and this kind of goes without saying, make sure for the love of God that you try to keep everyone around you at least somewhat friendly in times this goes badly. I mean, let's 
let's use Germany in World War One for an example. To try and if Germany continued on the course it's, it was when it started out the game, and when Bismarck was in office, they would be facing a potentially three-front war. But, if you use your diplomacy, try and use that rule, at least keep one front off your back, and try to keep at least one GP ally. Now, I know it's Victoria 2, and keeping allies is not something that's exactly easy to come by, but towards the end of the game, alliance blocks should form, and that's when the UK is more likely to go to war with you. Aside from that, uh, make sure at least that places like France and Russia aren't at low enough relations to declare war on you. And try to get some more allies if you can. The other major strategy is technology. Which is something that continental Europe really does have the advantage of. Prussia, Austria-Hungary, and... Well, not the Russians, they used to. Prussia and Austria-Hungary here start out with a military-industrial complex thought in technology, which is something I'll get to in a future episode. Um, this means that though their naval and cultural research are far slower, their army research is considerably faster. Britain has what amounts to almost the opposite. Their navy and industrial techs are considerably faster, while their, er, their navy and and commerce techs are considerably faster, while their primary cultural tech and their army tech are some of the worst in the world. So with that being said, it's uh, quite a no-brainer. If you're in Europe, research those army techs. Uh, if any great advantage you can have over the UK, I mean, you can have advantages from one technology to, like, 20. Any, any progress over Britain in this field will give you the a very decisive edge, and if there's something you really want over Britain, it's going to be in as far as your actual army is concerned. Now let's talk about something a little bit more dismal in their hope, the navy. When, when facing Britain on continental Europe, your navy is going to be less so for uh, offensive purposes, and a little bit more for absolute defense. Uh, your navy should almost never be out in the seas. That is one of the biggest mistakes you can make, and if you throw out a big navy in the middle of especially the North Sea here, or to a lesser extent the Baltics, trying to crush down British ships trying to blockade you, you will regret it very badly unless you are very advanced and are pumping out those ships. Your navy should be more like um, France's navy at the turn of World War One. Less for making offensive operations, and more so it's just strong enough that if Britain tries to, if Britain blockades you and has some transport ships trying to land, that you can at least knock them out, if not in a decisive battle. As far as going up against the actual Royal Navy itself, I can tell you, little hope on succeeding there. Even though Britain's ships will go obsolete as the game goes on and technologies keep going on, as uh, as is obvious. They will, they are one of the few countries along with Fran France and the US that will keep actively modernizing its navy as a main priority, uh, replacing ships and fleets with uh, more, newer models, so you really don't have that advantage there even if you do press the naval technologies. The only real way to defeat the Royal Navy is to just arm face it to death. You basically gotta get on its level to, uh, as a basis, and the AI will respond to a naval arms race like the actual UK in real life by trying to build up over you. But, as far as that goes, you basically gotta win the war, and there's only one real country that can do that, and that is Germany. A united Germany with all of its docks, and coastal cities, and places like Schweinmund, Setten, Danzig, Königsberg later on, uh, and of course, Kiel, where you even get a special event about making your shipbuilding faster. That's the only true, uh, reliable way to make sure that your ship production even matches UK. So, with that covered, I would generally recommend avoiding war with the UK as a continental Europe European power at generally almost all costs. There are some certain exceptions, for instance, uh, Germany getting Heligoland and Spain getting Gibraltar, and of course Italy getting Malta, 
But aside from those three, you generally don't have a real reason to be at war with the UK, and you generally shouldn't be until very late in the game. So that's Continental Europe, and in a few seconds we shall magically, spontaneously cut to America. Wow, that was fast. Now, as an American power, you probably have the easiest time uh, declaring war on the UK, and uh, all things considered, you probably have the easiest job to actually do. Despite the fact that British Canada and British Guiana are some of the some of the highest value colonies uh, that Britain has, and in fact in the world, they usually tend not to not to garrison them too well. Not to put armies there, or even ships, as they'll often have one in Canada and the Caribbean at the start of the game, that they'll just move to the UK as soon as it kicks off. So, um, generally, the f first things first, generally, uh, if you want to declare war on Britain and you want to fight them, it's probably best to do so from America, mostly because you have the most reasons. Of course, the USA can do the whole manifest destiny thing and keep acquiring states in Canada to expand its empire, as well as getting some calls from Caribou if they don't decide to fire the event that gives it to you anyway. As well as the fact that they border some provinces like New Brunswick, Quebec, and later on Newfoundland that are pretty high value areas. Of course, every other state mostly is added for just anything British you see in this area. I mean, all the British colonies of the Caribbean have their own are pretty good. Uh, you have the islands over here, which are probably the worst targets, but at the same time, um, they're, they have decent populations, and they're pretty easy to capture, and they're majority not British and not cold, so you have very little chance of actually losing them in the long run. Um, the Caribbean Islands is probably the capital of the Caribbean, if you would say so, with high-value provinces, uh, and a v an excellent launching place against the USA from Bermuda, which is still in the same region, uh, sulfur in, in Jamaica, fruits on the Cayman Islands, and cotton in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. So, with that being said, uh, going after the Caribbean islands of the UK is usually a pretty good investment. Of course, there's other things. Mexico and Central America both would do well from securing their borders, capturing Belize, and Venezuela starts out with some cause on old British Guiana. So, with that said, generally... Oh, and let's not forget the age-old Falkland dispute. So that said, generally, if you're going to be at war with the UK, you probably are going to be in America if you're starting it. So, the strategy can be basically be divided into, into like continental Europe, three, three basic strategies. One for if you're the US, Mexico, Texas, or CSA, or the Caribbean Islands, and or just North America in general, let's just say that. Uh, one for this the USCA, and most of the minor Latin American powers like it, and of course one specifically for the ABC in Uruguay. So starting off with the North America tactics. British Canada, as mentioned before, is probably the most valuable colony in the entire game. They have many high-value provinces with a large population, uh, most of them actually bordering your own nation, places like Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal. Um, as well as having a lot of foreign cores, where even if you don't want them directly, you can just free them and add them to the sphere. Uh, overall, a very good area to as area to capture areas from, but also pretty easy to assault. First off, Britain usually keeps only one or two armies at most in Canada. Usually one, and it's t it tends to be a very large one. Now that sounds threatening at first, but then you realize that if that army wants to move at all from high value or er, high supply. Ottawa or Toronto, um, they're going to have to go through a lot of much worse territory to actually get to where you are, and even when they discover things like medicine, they'll still probably have a fair amount of uncolonized land to actually go through, especially if you attack on, if you attack BC. So that being said, obviously the 
just as long as you're attacking pretty far away from where their armies are, they should their army is more accurately, they should be uh pretty much worn down and ready to be assaulted, much less of a threat by the time they actually get to you. Well, if they do decide to split up their armies a little bit more visibly, which I have seen in AHD, um, it still is just a generally easy area to take. Because that border, the border is gigantic, and they can't really... Generally, they can't really make assaults from it, just because they have to have so many armies on hand to squash anyone trying to take the random provinces within that get such a high war score. With that being said, um, British Canada is not only a great idea f British Canada is not only a great idea to assault, it's also generally a very uh, bountiful assault as well. Really, the only thing I can say as one of these powers is just fear invasion from uh, the actual continental islands, or in some situations, Asia and Hong Kong. Because that's the only real things that could drag you down. Overall, um, I would very much recommend assaulting with any of these nations. Secondarily, there's the major, the minor South American nations, particularly the USCA, who has the biggest reason to be at war. For this, I would recommend a strategy of island hopping. Uh, take one transport boat, you sh and make sure to stay away from the actual Royal Navy itself, where it'll be sunk. Put a disposable unit on it, and basically put it on a Caribbean vacation tour. Start in Jamaica, go through the Caribbean islands, and around there. While at the same time, you get military access as needed, and make your way to actual British Guiana. Though there will be considerably a considerably larger army there, it's still much more valuable than just trying to actually uh, maintain a constant hold on all these territories. Of course, Belize over here itself, obvious strategic target for Mexico and the USCA, but I would not recommend so much uh, trying to maintain a very large hold on it, because having a hold on it will cause Britain to try and invade your, you on the mainland. So I'd take it one of the last things, just trying to have a guard on it, uh, just in case they do decide to land. Otherwise, if you don't border Belize or British Guiana, you should be pretty much A-OK -okay as far as it goes. They'll very rarely try to mount actual invasions, uh, as, U as USCA, I've only had it happen to me once. Um... And even then, they should be, they'll generally be uh, just small amounts of transport boats without having any of their warships on them. Which means that they have moved their navies at the start of the game, which they almost definitely have. Um, it should be just a straight stomp for any even vaguely competent navy. As for the ABC alliance, whoa, things are getting slow. As for the ABC countries and Uruguay down here, it's just pretty much just a fun ride. Just... Occupy what you want at whatever point you want, and that'll generally do it. I mean, start with the Falklands, of course, and British Guiana, so they can't make an invasion. After that, they really can't do anything to you. You're way too far away and in much too treacherous water for them to mount a decent naval assault on. Well, you have a pretty good shot at the easier to assault areas in the Caribbean, as aforementioned. And if you're particularly daring, you can even go on a little expedition in South. South Africa and some of their surrounding British islands. Overall, ABC country is probably the easiest to defend from the UK from. Now, while uh, that's so easy, you really wouldn't need a guide on that, would you? Next, it's time to go to the main meat of why I'm doing this Asia. Hopefully by that point I can determine why the FPS is so low. So, another jump cut, and soon we'll be in the uncivilized territory. Boom! Another jump cut. I bet you weren't expecting that at all. So welcome to Siam, where we'll be talking about defending from Britain and Asia. Now, there is a little bit uh, of a problem about the UK and Asia. If you're, def if you're at war with the UK, generally you're doing one of two things. Either you're trying to knock them out of India or Southeast Asia, which by the time you're going to be able to actually mount such things, you're well civilized, it's probably in as, after the turn of the century, and you're going to be fairly well unable to defend from them, especially with things like tanks, especially considering that their Indian states never modernize. However, a much likelier situation if you're at war with Britain is that they're trying to take you over, or at least parts of you. This is a problem. This is a very big problem. 
places in a unsaves in Asia probably have the highest stakes of any uh, countries that can be at war with the UK because if if you're an unsub nation, if there's one thing you really don't want happening to you, it's some of your territory falling into foreign jurisdiction. Um, considering that that'll both take income away from you and anglicize and thereby foreignize the culture of whatever province they've actually captured, that is going to make uh, civilization that much harder and worse of and worse yet, it's going to force you to go to war to war with the UK again at some further point, or just simply accept the loss and move on, which is at some at in some points just not really conceivably good. I mean, sometimes it does come to that. I've had games where I've had that and had the UK still occupying my provinces to the very end of the game just because it's just such a hell to assault them without being completely civilized. But eventually, if, if such a case does come up, your time will come. So with that being said, let's talk about what you actually do for an absolute defense from the UK. First hand, occupy those colonies. Not these specific colonies that I'm pointing at, but th as with the U the o the Americas, not the USA, Britain tends to leave these colonies mostly. I say mostly because sometimes they have a few more than expected, but they tend to leave these places mostly on garrison, even if they're actually at war with another power like China. So that being said, any war score you can get from occupying these is a distinct advantage, and having them take losses from attrition to try and occupy them back helps you out that much more. I would uh, advise you to try and run away if they decide to make a naval landing, but aside from that, generally uh, that's going to be a big part of your strategy. So the main point of your strategy uh, should be pretty obvious, especially for places like Siam that are absolute hell to occupy. Keep your armies somewhat small, But still, keep them spread apart. Use them as distraction and bait more than anything else. Bait the Brits into attacking a very small army in a high in a high attrition area. At which point they'll try to start occupying instead of uh, trying to hunt down your armies further. Only, and I repeat, only ever attack Britain as an unciv nation if you have a very, very vast. Uh, numerical advantage over them because the Brits will destroy you at almost three to one odds, especially if you haven't gotten any of the reforms yet. And that's kind of a two, and that's kind of a double-edged sword. And I'd say the uh, ratio tends to be pretty much consistent through the whole thing because even when you do get uh, infantry from foreign weapons, forts from military construction, and bonuses from the other army techs. You're still not going to stand a chance, because even though Britain does research its army technology slower, they still research them. Meaning that, eventually, you'll basically be fighting against the same odds. Because even though you'll have infantry, they'll have guards. Even though you'll have higher organization, so will they. They'll have researched the appropriate techs. And to a greater extent, probably, from the technology. So, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. General practices, uh, don't go after Britain's armies, especially the bigger ones. Let them kill themselves until they get to, down to very low levels, at which point you should probably attack them with the brunt of your forces. Like this uh, 27 stack here at Bangkok, which uh, can actually fit, haha, <laughs> Bangkok, which can actually fit due to uh, attrition. Just proving how attrition-tastic these places are if the armies of these nations can't even stand in them properly. Um, this 27 size army with basically default text made up of regulars, at this point the game will be able to take out a squad of ooh, 9, 12 maybe, in good circumstances, usually favoring them. The one time I would say that you actually would stand a general chance is with, not this place, this tech, advanced constructions. If you have a fort in your capital and you're dug in, you can stand a lot, a lot better odds. Like, uh, if I can survive even almost 
at same odds, especially if these guys are made up of infantry you get later on. But otherwise, don't try to assault them. So, with that being said, generally defend and hope for YPs here. I'm not going to go major into assault. In fact, I'm not even going to go at all. Because you really shouldn't be making large assaults on Britain from here. And when you are, it when you are much later in the game, uh, they're going to be pretty much just creep and win. I mean, there's not really mu that much to it. So with that said, let's go into slightly more in-depth uh, coverage on per nation basis. Siam has the best as the best advantage as far as attrition wars go, and aside from its points in. Singapore really isn't that mu under that much threat of British attack. Though, historically, they did take these places in the end. Um, generally, it's it's not going to be that hard to uh, defend from there. Just make sure you don't try to face the full brunt of a British assault, because that's devastating. Also, uh, w word of caution, if you're going to go after Joe Horde, do it really early in the game, since AHD Britain nowadays fears it. China has probably the best odds of any uncivil power, just because they have massive, massive hordes of uh, armies and people from every area. However, going against Britain, Britain tends to add allies into the war, so you'll have to be contending with not only their own uncivil hordes from India, but also... Uh, Prussia, Austria, Hungary, France, and in worst case, the Russian Empire. Generally, if such a thing comes to that, I just surrender. So just considering that they only usually try to take Hong Kong and maybe Formosa at worst. Japan is probably the second least threatened, just because they generally won't try to call allies, and there's, it's very hard to actually make a proper landing on Japan, just because they are both on an island chain, and they're decently low supply areas. Though Japan does is probably the quickest place to actually modernize the army and civilize, there is still a somewhat threat of a war, especially if you act poorly in Southeast Asia at the beginning of the game. So I would just say uh, play defense, but you can kick, it is very realistically possible to kick Brits out almost no matter how the war is going. So with that said, Everyone's favorite AI nation should be much less of a threat. As I said at the beginning of the video, these tactics are not 100% reliable, and of course it's the UK, it's the biggest power in the world for most of this time. Generally, you won't be winning wars, but you can at least try to wipe peace out, and Britain usually does attempt this. Next week, we'll be talking about what to do with another large AI nation, one that we mentioned earlier today, China. So, until next week, and there will be one next week, believe me, I've been, I've been Anani, this has been Let's Explain Victoria 2, and it's going to be really nice finally getting videos back to you people. See you next week, folks.